Hello, everyone, and welcome back to NCOIL One-on-One. -on -one. We're delighted to have with us here today Kentucky Representative Bart Rowland, chair of both the NCOIL Property and Casualty Insurance Committee and the Kentucky House Banking and Insurance Committee. Representative Rowland, thank you so much for joining us today. Thank you for having me. I look forward to the interview. Yeah. So let's hop right in. I wonder how you first got involved in public service. Uh, how do I get involved in public service? So I was involved a little bit in local politics, good friends with uh, the former state representative who preceded me, still good friends with him. He's in Congress now. Uh, but one of the big factors, I think, uh, that led me to running for uh, for elected office was my involvement with the uh, independent insurance agents uh, here in Kentucky. And, and I would go to those conferences in Frankfurt and go to those, even go to those conferences in D.C. and uh, just really kind of got involved and, and um, folks saw me as, as a potential uh, candidate, I think, through that involvement to run for office. So you mentioned with the independent agents, I'm assuming insurance is one of the issues you're really involved in uh, in the legislature. What other issues have you been involved in uh, throughout your time? Yeah, obviously uh, insurance issues um, for the most part, especially uh, those involving uh, insure tech issues. Those are really interesting to me. Uh, a couple of the issues that popped up that we never would have dreamed of during COVID were COVID protections. And I was able to sponsor that bill at NCOL and also back in Kentucky as well. Great. And so in addition to your public service, you're also a licensed insurance agent and the vice president of your own agency. Uh, how does serving in the industry in that capacity impact your approach in the legislature? Yeah, you know, uh, insurance policies and the industry in general are pretty technical in nature. I mean, it could take new employees in my own, in my agency years, if not decades or more, to really get a grasp of the issues and understand how the industry works. Uh, my background in the insurance industry has allowed me to kind of be front and center on nearly all the insurance issues and in, uh, that have gone on in Kentucky over the last decade and to be one of the legislators that other members uh, come to for advice um, as it relates to insurance. So in addition to insurance and the legislative service, you're also a rancher. Um, how does that experience impact uh, your approach and the other aspects? Well, but not necessarily, I wouldn't consider ourselves a rancher. We're, we, we've got a small beef cattle operation. It's, it's really small in nature. Uh, a lot of the area that I represent here in Kentucky uh, has farms, whether the most of them are part time. There's just not a lot of new, a lot of large full time farmers. But uh, just like being in being in my insurance business from day to day, being being out on the farm part time and learning about the struggles that farmers are facing, just helps me better understand those issues. Uh, just like a business issue when it comes before us in the General Assembly. Awesome. And so, how do you think all the those unique experiences has kind of impact made an impact in your family life? Uh, you know, my family has been 100 percent supportive and obviously you can't do something like this for 10 years if they're not. Uh, I know they're going to be happy uh, that I'll be around more and I'm going to be happy that that I'll be around more. My kids are um, uh, extremely active in sports and extracurricular activities and, uh, you know, my business is growing and and um, it, it's just time. You know, I think it's time for me to to come back and focus on those things. Great. So you mentioned your family and also your business. Um, we know that you've been seen as a rising star both at NCOIL and the Kentucky legislature. Our CEO, Tom Considine, uh, says how much might the Senate Minority Leader Mitch McConnell thinks of you. Um, what other factors are kind of going into uh, making your decision to lead the legislature right now at this point? Yeah, I think I think I kind of just mentioned what the two main driving factors were there. The fact that my family uh, is requiring more and more of my time, and and uh, I've been gone, been gone for quite a while. You know, I was I was gone during kind of an odd, an odd time in my family's career. My kids were probably two to five years old when I first got got elected. Now they're uh, somewhere between thirteen and sixteen years old, and, and they're just really really busy. And thankfully, my business is growing, and it's requiring more of my time. And those are the two main issues. And, and plus the fact that we we've, we've done a lot uh, over the last six years that uh, we've been in the majority and. In Kentucky, and and I've had the privilege of chairing uh, the insurance committee in Kentucky. We've we've just done a lot. We've done a lot of issues, and and uh, just a combination of all those things has has kind of led me to the decision of where I'm at. That's great. So moving on, uh, how did you first hear about Encoil, and how many years you've been involved? Uh, you know, I heard about Encoil pretty soon after getting elected. When you when you're a new legislator, kind of towards the end of session, you'll get uh, you'll get all the invites to go to the conferences where it's whether it's NCSL or SLC or even NCOL. So I learned to, started hearing about it then and started having some of the folks around the insurance industry talk to me about it. I don't think I attended any conferences my first year uh, in the legislature. I had I can't I had a special election, I had uh, a contested primary and then I had a general election all in one year and I had never ran for office before. So uh, I had a lot going on that year. But I think the next year, probably 2013, um, I, I attended my first in conference and I've been a regular attendee ever since. 
Great. Yeah. It sounds like those elections definitely kept you busy. Um, so given your extensive uh, involvement with the organization, how do you think the organization's changed throughout your time uh, being involved? You know, I've, I've definitely seen an increase in legislator involvement. Uh, the attendance overall has increased uh, significantly over the years. And I've also seen an increase in NCOL's willingness to take on more issues and to pass more model laws, really, uh, really putting the organization out there as the foremost expert when it comes to these legislative insurance issues. Uh, what issues or model laws have you been most involved in, most proud of throughout your time? You know, it's definitely been, it's been around um, the insure tech issues and the disruptors in the marketplace. Uh, those have always just been extremely interesting to me just to see how these, these, these new disruptors are coming into our industry and industry I've been involved in for 20 some years and, and how we're going to have to respond uh, public policy wise uh, to those. Uh, you know, that so far, probably the peer to peer car sharing model act that I sponsored and, and passed uh, is probably one of my favorites. But hopefully next week when we're at the annual conference, we have the sandbox and the delivery network uh, model uh, up for adoption and and uh, look forward to seeing those across the finish line. Great. Uh, do you have any key takeaways that you've had throughout your overall experience with the organization? And how do you think that might tie into encouraging new legislators to start attending meetings? You know, if. Uh, if it, if a legislator on the insurance committee um, really gets involved with the NCOL, it's noticed back in the states. You know, if they even if they're not a state committee insurance chair, but if they're involved in the NCOL organization, and let's say they bring a model law back to Kentucky and they're trying to trying to pass it, it just immediately uh, brings them some credibility. The members are going to know that they're an active member at NCOL. They're going to know that it's probably an NCOL model law, and it's just going to make it a, a much easier path for them. Uh, to get the legislation through. Okay. And then on the other side, what do you see as like benefits for non-legislators, consumer, industry representatives, uh, just generally in the industry? Yeah, you know, obviously it's the access to legislators that you're going to get when you attend the conference, but it's also uh, the open dialogue kind of mock process that that NCOL does such a good job at. I mean, it allows them to be right at the table making suggestions on behalf of the companies that they represent and really having an impact, impact on uh, on what the final version of a model law might look like. Right. So I guess maybe stepping back a little bit, um, you're leaving the legislature now after a decade of public service. Um, what advice would you give to people now who are looking to be run for elected office, get involved in more of these organizations like NCOIL and things like that? Uh, you know, first and foremost, uh, make sure your family's on board. Uh, you, you, just, you just absolutely can't do it if they're not. It, uh, I've, been, I've been blessed that, that my family has been behind me 100 uh, percent for the past decade while I've done this. And then also just, you know, make sure that that, you know, that you'll have the time and flexibility to commit to it. It it can be stressful sometime when you're trying to balance that work and then the, the work legislative uh, kind of duties. Uh, just, you know, make sure those two things, I think, are the most important before you make the decision. Right. And so based on your service in Kentucky, have you seen partisanship having uh, an impact on legislation specifically around insurance, as has been seen with a lot of other issues and a lot of other legislative bodies? Uh, no, you know, for the most part, even even in Kentucky, where things I would think that it would be more partisan in the states than it is at NCOL. And I'm not really seeing it in either place. We've been lucky uh, to have the support of, uh, of both parties uh, on legislation, both back in the state and at NCOL. Right. So naturally, we discussed some of the positive things about Uncoil, but given your overall experience of the organization over this past uh, decade, um, there's always, of course, things we can do better. What steps do you think we could take to improve? Well, I keep advocating that for Tom and Will to not schedule that property and casualty committee on Saturday morning. So <laughs> we can get that permanently pushed back uh, to <laughs> maybe a late Friday afternoon. I know that uh, I know everybody would probably enjoy that. I think you got that wish coming up in New Orleans. So. Yeah, I think yeah, I think we do. That's got, maybe that's my going away present. But <laughs> you know, there's always room for improvement. But I think they're I think they're doing an outstanding job, and uh, and whatever those those issues are that they need to improve on, I'm sure they'll they'll kind of come to the top and be addressed. Great. All right. So now let's move into our lightning round of questions. These are just for our audience to get to know you a little better. Nothing too hard hitting. Um, can we hear your favorite all time movie? Yeah, you know, I had to think about all these a little bit. Uh, Tombstone. Great answer. Yep. Favorite actor of all time? Tommy Lee Jones is still up there with him for me. Another great one. All right. Favorite all time book or author? So there's a Kentucky author uh, back here uh, in Northern Kentucky that I've got to know a little bit from my time in Frankfurt. His name is Rick Robinson. All right. Let's check that out. Uh, favorite all time musical artist? 
So right now, my family is a uh, is a big fan of the country music group Midland. Mm, nice. Um, favorite all time meal. Uh, so we do something kind of neat here around the house is that we uh, dry age our own steaks. So uh, I've got a got a, a steak ager uh, down in the basement, and we try to keep something in there all the time. And when it's time for us to cook out or have a family meal, we uh, we like to have one of our home uh, homemade steaks. That's awesome. I could probably ask you 20 follow-up questions about that. I'll have to uh, bring that up in New Orleans. Uh, favorite all-time TV show? Uh, justified. Basically. Great answer. All right. And then last one, three dinner party guests, living or dead? Uh, I'd have to say my two grandfathers and my father-in-law, who are all three gone now, you know, as you always learn, there's a lot of questions that uh, that I never got the answers to. So that would be that would be who I would pick. Great. All right. Well, this wraps up the Spun Sound Coil one on one interview with Kentucky Representative Bart Rowland. Thank you for taking time, Representative Rowland. Look forward to seeing you in New Orleans. All right. Thank you. See you next week. Yeah.